Well, you can see it. You can't feel it, touch it, or weigh it. And I think that's why it's so often overlooked by students. The next step along the way of my lighting awareness was, I think probably in the first few days of my architecture course, um, one of the teachers said, the essential ingredients of architecture is space, light, and materiality. Well, I understood space. I did at that stage. I understood materiality, we all do. Mm. Um, I didn't really get the idea of light fully. Mm. And I suppose since then, in all the years since then, I've become more and more aware of this importance. Without light, nothing exists. And even the materiality, we think we know about it, but can change its mood depending on what the light is doing to it. If it's uh, yeah, brightly lit or poorly lit or intentionally lit some way, is it warm light or cold light falling upon it? It'll be warm materiality or cold materiality. The colour of lighting is important, um, uh, artificial lighting. It's not quite so easy to colour. No. Um, you have greater control over artificial lighting, particularly now, uh, this LED lighting, and you can walk into a hardware store and, and buy just about any coloured fluorescent tube or incandescent bulb uh, that you wish to use. Um, uh, and also the intensity of light. Um, I strongly recommend you use dimmer switches whenever you can because I know I've got them in our house and we use them a lot. Um, you know, as the evening progresses you can dim them off and you get ready for sleep. Yeah. The location, the source of the light yeah. uh, is very important. Um, I like indirect lighting, maybe because I wear glasses and glare as a factor. The light source, I like, you know, here we have the most crudest form of artificial lighting, but it's up there, it does the job, but it's, it's, it's cost effective and it's cheap to run, but it's a bit nasty. The best lighting in my view is indirect lighting. Let's take an easy one, uh, our apartment in Thailand. Mm -hmm. We bought it, it was sort of 15 years old and it was a bit Thai, not in a particularly mm -hmm. nice way. Um, it was a Thai architect attempt to make it modern. I thought it was going to be okay because we were just going to live there for a little while and rent it out when we weren't there. I think after three days I realised that I couldn't live there anymore, so the next six months were devoted to a major renovation. Mm -hmm. And that was an opportunity, just all the devices that I gathered over the years to make it feel more spacious and make that, that space that existed flow. Uh, so I took the wall down between the living room and the bedroom and put another wall back, but the wall that I put back didn't run to the ceiling. Mm -hmm. On the top of that wall, which is more than a wall, it's like a cabinet about 600, 500, half a metre wide. On the top of that, and just above eye height, I put a series of up lights. So getting back to the, the concealed lighting source, uh, that's, that lights up um, the, the living space uh, with a soft glow on the ceiling. Mm. So it just sort of, it's like the ceiling becomes luminous and, 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 and provides general lighting. One wall, the glass wall overlooking the ocean is all glass, mm -hmm. but it also faces southwest, so we get some summer sun, but uh, I install uh, little shutters across there, so uh, it lets the light in, but it's filtered down light, which is lovely to look at. Mm. Uh, there's no light fitting on the ceiling of the apartment at all. Oh, okay. No light fitting at all, because 
hit the ceiling heights 2.6, which is higher than, you know, 200 higher than the minimum of 2.4, but I still wanted it to feel uh, higher than that. Yeah, so recently I just did a project um, where we had to design apartments for citizens currently experiencing homelessness, and I decided that would be a good opportunity to take the building and treat it as a place where people can experience rehabilitation and healing through the built form. Um, and obviously one of the key aspects of rehabilitation is natural light and how people can recover uh, through the experience of natural light in their apartments and just increase someone's well-being and to help them recover from depression and anxiety and, and addiction. Um, the abundance of natural light in one's apartment is very important. So I designed the apartments so they all have dual aspect um, and so all the bathrooms in each of the apartments have windows so they can access borrowed light from each of the rooms. So at any one point of the day there doesn't need to be light switch on except obviously for the night time. Um, this helps people recover because they usually resort to going to spaces which are confined and small and dark which increases people's depression and anxiety and they don't really come out of their apartments. <clears throat> Each design should, every design should be um, used to uh, harness natural light and be orientated to receive the best solar gain possible for that environment. That's just a basic design principle, but it is enhanced in an a built form like this because it is dealing with rehabilitation it needs to be taken that next step and that next level so materials are also used in the apartments which reflect light um, and that can absorb warmth so cork walls are used in the apartment to, for acoustics and for to bring warmth into bedrooms so obviously heaters and things like that need to be switched on but then also materials such as uh, foreglow and reflecting materials are used in the bedrooms and in the bathrooms to reflect natural light and also so you just don't have to use electricity. Also natural lighting <coughs> is used not only in the apartments but throughout all the communal spaces as well. So just like different materials are used in polycarb walls for areas that usually would not be given light to. So interview rooms and you know, kitchen or laundry is usually a brick walled or closed off. Um, and kind of by giving that light materials and letting light filter throughout the whole thing, it kind of gives a more communal, um, more open approach to areas. Um, nothing's really, everything's transparent, not, not in a physical sense, but in like a mental sense, so like you don't have any barriers between um, interview rooms and clients and things like that so people don't feel as though they're getting treated differently to other people and everything um, can be accessed by citizens and by residents and there's not really a us and them kind of divide that usually is seen by them. The way natural light was used in the building was all the um, apartments have terraces at the front of their units so usually we find apartments having uh, five metre balconies which are always private. Um, this in turn takes away 2.5 metres of natural light in bedroom areas usually because or lounge room areas whichever where it's positioned so by putting the terrace at the front where the northern natural light already is it doesn't actually interfere with um, your bedrooms or your private spaces gaining natural light and this is also used, um, the terraces at the front, because they're open terraces and they're not balconies, you can use that space as borrowed space. So that borrowed space is also, also used for borrowed light. Mm -hmm. um, and then your outdoor space is obviously filled with plants and greenery, which lets your uh, oxygen, carbon, uh, CO2, to, to kind of take that out of the air in the apartments, which also increases healing and helps to clean the air inside of the apartments and things like that. And because the apartments are so small, it's, it is very easy to get natural light. But I guess there's so many examples of people not really using um, natural light to endorse healing.